Well, hi, once again, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be looking at a very special camera, something that's uh, quite unique, very rare. Few people have even heard of it, and uh, it's something that I've always kind of dreamed of having, and thanks to my good friend Stuart Skalka. He's got an extensive collection of wonderful cameras, uh, and he let me borrow this, so uh, I can use it and go out and have some good times with it. But back in, uh, well, several years ago, I used to shoot with a uh, Fuji GSW-690, and uh, that was a great camera. It's a rangefinder, and it uh, shot a format of two and a quarter by three and a quarter. That's the same aspect ratio as a 35 millimeter uh, film. So I really like that, but it had one drawback. Uh, if you wanted to take pictures of tall buildings, and one of my favorite things to do is photograph old Victorian buildings, and uh, I had to tilt up occasionally, and you'd introduce that keystoning, kind of a distortion. You know how the buildings lean over when you do that. But you have to keep the film plane parallel with the front of the building, and you won't have that distortion. Well, the key to doing that is to shift the lens up. And so most of those cameras, the two and a quarter or 120 film cameras, they don't do that. But this baby does, and it's a beautiful camera. It's the Plabo, it's a uh, shift camera. It's called the Pro Shift, actually. It's a, a 690. It has a 47 millimeter super angulon lens. And the beautiful feature of this is that that lens moves up. You can shift it up. Just by moving it, it's real easy. You can just move it up, and you'll notice that the viewfinder up here, it actually moves, and that's correcting for the parallax correction, or any distortion. You can see where the top of the billing will be uh, when you shift it. And there's a scale here that actually tells you um, how much of uh, a shift you can get away with, and that image circle changes as you stop down a lens. So if you're wide open, the image circle is smaller, stop down, it's much larger and be sharper around the edges. So this, by shifting this, I'm going to show you later here, there's a scale, tells you don't exceed that limit with that f-stop. And not only will it do horizontal, but it will do vertical. You can just move it up and down on a vertical position. And again, that viewfinder moves again to correct. Amazing engineering feat. So we're going to take a closer look at that. And this is part one of part two, and we're going to be going up to Virginia City in part two and put this through its paces. But today we're going to look at details of this unique camera. And stick around because you'll be amazed at the features. No other camera has ever been made like this. So uh, let's take a closer look at it. Of course, we have the Schneider Super Angulon 47 millimeter lens. Extremely large image circle. No problem covering six by nine, even with some movements. Uh, if you do extreme shifts, you're going to have to stop that lens down because that'll enlarge the image circle. We have the shutter release here, but you have to hook up the cable. As the cable release goes there and then over, just like any view camera lens, hooks into here. So you just cock that and you would shut it like that. We have a sports finder here, and that will be in conjunction with a back section we'll look at in a minute. But here's the amazing thing about this camera. This is a locking knob. It allows you to shift. So notice how this top moves in unison with this. And that gives you your parallax correction. Normally you'd be doing this with the camera vertical if you wanted to shoot tall buildings and you want to get that done. And uh, if you're going to do maximum shift, of course you want to stop down, get the maximum uh, image circle. And there are scales on the top here that'll tell you exactly what your limits are. And just by placing your two thumbs here when this is unlocked, look at that rise, that's considerable. So that's how that works. And this is just the lock. This viewfinder is very accurate and it's got this nice guides on the inside. And you'll see here, this is a part of the sports finder. A lot of people shoot this handheld actually and uh, do street photography with it, but it's uh, Pretty easy to use handheld. It's got a great grip on it. The handles here and over there. This is a uh, basically the same design back as the Mamiya Press, the old Mamiya Press. And it takes 120 or 220 film. Okay, now looking at the top, we can see some of the interesting features that make this so unique. Both the horizontal and vertical have a spirit level. Again, we have the cable release hookup here. 
you can in fact when the actual cable release is in position you can put a different cable release and put it right in here and that will work uh, we have the advanced lever here and the scale up here that was that little sports finder at this cold shoe but again as you as we shift this this was talking about that correction see how that turns now if you have maybe only f8 or 11 that might be the maximum of an acceptable uh, shift for you in order to not have the softness on the edges as you stop down to 16 and 22 you can go all the way up to 15 degrees shift and that's a lot of shift you usually don't need all that but that is a great guide and again you can see that the viewfinder will be turning in unison with that in the back we see a tab here that holds the uh, reminder for your film just tear the back of the box off slide that in so you know what film you have in there our cable or our film advance and when we take the picture each time we take the picture we'll have to push this forward to release the lock and then advance to the next frame and of course can't see much of it but this is where the cold shoe is and you see the two knobs on the bottom these are the locks for the real the, the rolls the take up roll and the advance roll so one of the things that really uh, confused me of how this thing advances, we'll take a look at the inside and I'll show you what I mean. Because every camera that I've ever used or even every film holder that I've ever used, when you advance this, this is supposed to turn and take up, take up reels over here. And I thought, oh, this thing is broken. But if you look over here, you see that this is turning. So. The film goes from the fresh roll over here, and this is your take-up roll. So when you advance it, it advances the film there. And so that's a, kind of a unique feature. And these, of course, are the take-up, are the, the locks for the spools. You just put them in, and that holds them in place. Here And advance it until it gets to these yellow marks here. And then you stop, close the back, and advance it several times, and it'll lock in the number one position. And this is a pressure plate and it's easy to take this off and, and set it in for the 220. So that's uh, how that all works. And I'll show you how this shift device works here. When, when we're moving this up, you can see that's quite a bit of shift, a rise I should say. And the shift would be going this way. Keep in mind that everything is back upside down when we do this, the top of the building will be down here and the bottom will be up here. So what we're doing is reducing the foreground and including more of the sky. So what an amazing setup. And you'll notice how this changes. And again, if you wanted to use the sports finder, you could just pull that up and pop this up. And that's what it looks like if you're standing behind it. But boy, the grip on this and all, it is just really very nice. There's a little latch here for the opening and closing of the back. Okay, one of the things I really like about this uh, Super Angulon lens, it has a standard 52 millimeter threaded filter. Now, if you were to put regular 52 millimeter filters on there, it could infringe on the image circle if you start shifting quite a bit. So best to get oversized filters. I use the 77 millimeter. I have a bunch of those. That's what I use kind of standardized on all of my gear. And the way I use it is that I have a 52 millimeter to 77 millimeter adapter. It's a step up ring. They only cost a couple bucks. Really worth having. So being that that's so much larger, when I have a shift, I'm not going to be worried about vignetting the edges so much. So I suggest you get that. Don't get anything smaller than that if you can avoid it. Of course, the 77 millimeter filters are a little more expensive. The bigger filter you have, the harder it is to, or the more expensive it is. So it just threads on. And uh, of course, you can use uh, polarizing filters. And as you may have heard me say before, I use a moose polarizing filter when I'm doing uh, most of my color stuff practically all the time. So be sure to get 
an oversized filter. Get that step up ring from 52 up to 77 if you can. I mentioned earlier how I was a little confused about this cable release. This is what it looks like. And I couldn't figure out how to mount the darn thing in here. Uh, this was kind of straightforward. I thought that had to go in there since this wasn't threaded. But a couple things. This is a double adjustment here. You have to, you can rotate this, but you have to adjust this so when the plunger goes, it doesn't go too far in. It'll come back so when this is fired, it'll allow this to come into the ready position again without locking it open. So you got to make sure you have it adjusted, test it before you use it. The other thing, this goes in here. I couldn't figure out how, but there's a little hole right here. This goes in, you'll hear it snap. It just locks in place there. And to get it out, there's a little lock here. You pull that over and this drops right out. So pretty straightforward. And then when that's in place, you can see this is going to be working just fine. And then you just have to screw it in here. But again, you will have adjusted it and tested it before. Okay. So I don't have an adjusted yet, but let's see how it works. Yeah. It's not staying open, so it's working fine. So that's how that works. Now, if this is a little awkward, if for some reason you want, want to hook another cable release, you can put a standard cable release in here, and that'll do the same thing. But can't imagine why that would uh, you'd want to do that. So anyhow, that's how that works. And so <laughs> kind of a mystery solved. Two issues I had was the cable release and how that film advances. It's just backwards from anything I've ever experienced. Well, that concludes our talk about the Plobble camera. Hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. If you did, please uh, give it a thumbs up. That really helps. Consider uh, sharing with your friends and please subscribe. It really helps out. Be sure to watch out for number two in this series. Uh, this is part one today. Part two, we're going up to Virginia City, see some of those beautiful uh, old buildings and explore that old ghost town. So until next time, stay focused.